Independent Stop and Search monitoring, monitoring group, Ken. Oh, Ken, it's been a big week this week for the Met Police and the reverberations. We've just spoken to our friend up north there. Um, how do the police fix this? What are they getting wrong, in your opinion? I think what the police seem to be getting wrong is the extent of the actual issues that they face, just how, how endemic it is in all aspects of policing. Now, it's unfortunate that when you've got the leadership who still fail to acknowledge just how serious uh, and what a crisis that the police, the Met Police mm -hmm. are facing, um, around confidence uh, and trust in the police, um, he's denying institutionalised racism, mm. like if it's some political um, ball that's being played, when in my community that we've been complaining about being over-policed in the black community for the last 40 years, and the, the fallout from that is that a number of our people have, have been killed by the hands of the police, and, and also many of us in our community don't turn to the police when they've become a victim of crime. Now, as I said... It, he needs to, first of all, acknowledge the extent and the harm that it has done to the black community. We've had the Skarman report. We had the Fer um, Mike Ferguson mm. report in the 1990s, who all allude to around institutionalised racism. We feel the backlash of that. And I'm thinking it starts with acknowledging the harm that other policing has done to particular communities. Baroness Casey used this phrase about eye-watering force being used by the police. Isn't there a case that sometimes you might need to use eye-watering force? If you've got a proper mm. villain who's go, trying to escape with a knife in his pocket, I'm all right well, with eye-watering force. So am I. I'm, 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 I'm all for it, and I will support the police when we have that side of criminal coming, coming to us. Yeah. But when we look at the stop and search, for example, nine out of ten stop and search lead to no further action. But it can lead to the person on the receiving end being what we call stopped and scarred. That's either emotional or physical. Now, take it for example, if you look at the system, you'll find that if you're a black young man, you can be more likely to be dealt with harsher at every level. That means even on, on, a, on a normal interaction, on a stop and search, you're going to be, uh, your use of force will be more likely to be targeted to, one, uh, to, to, uh, to, to that person. So uh, and even though they haven't committed any offence. So when you mention, uh, you see a man wielding a knife or, 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 or gun or anything, that nature, they've got the, the, the apparatus to deal with that. Tasers, they've got, they've got sprays, they've got force, they've got batons. But when they generally use it on innocent bystander, and adultification means that particularly young men who are under the age of 18, that's not very good introduction or very good interaction to have f from where I'm sitting. If there's an area particularly, it's, it's so, is Haringey, is that, that's where right. you work, is that, is that predominantly or disproportionately represented by the black community as, as compared to other areas in the country? I, I, I wouldn't say disproportionately. Um, um, like compared to other like rural um, regions or, you know, there's going to be a higher density of black people there, in that there, area. There is, there is a substantial um, density of black people in that, in, in that area. Yeah. But... What we're trying to say is quite clearly that you've got to police by consent. Because if you don't police by consent, you're going to be looked as though you're an occup occupying force, which means that people aren't going to warm to you mm. and aren't going to be very supportive. I have so much trouble in trying to convince young people who's become victim of crime and some serious crime to, to actually look and, and, and go to the police and give off the intelligence. And they, they must prefer to say that there's no snitching culture yeah. in our community, which I feel has... Hasn't done, me... <laughs> hasn't, done, hasn't done our community well. It's, it's a, such a mess, isn't it? Um, Chris Hobbs was talking about Trident, Operation Trident. Was that a success for you? It, it, it started off in, in the right vein to target really serious, violent cr um, criminal, but it ended up in, like, I, I remember the, at one stage, they, went, they couldn't break the, um, the silence within that community. So they thought it was a bright idea to go to Jamaica and get some of the people from there to become informants over here. Mm. But unfortunately, some of the people that they picked from Jamaica were Jamaican gangsters who came over here and they just thought they had a legal gun. And all they did was exploit more violence on our community and more terrorism in our community. So I said it started off well, 
Mm. But it ended up and they had to be disbanded because a, a number of cases, particularly when a young girl from Stonebridge, a young 10 year old girl, yeah. got shot. Um, when they, they shot, the, they came for the, for the father, right. killed him, but she, she was there, so they couldn't leave yeah. her eyewitness and they ended up killing her too. But so. it, yeah. But there's clearly a problem and some... I, I don't know what the solution is right now, but it's, it's difficult. The, the, the solution is you, you can't arrest your way out of this. They've got yeah. to work with people like ourselves, grassroots groups, who can change the mindset okay. of these young people. All right, thank you, Ken. Ken Hines there. So it's fascinating, isn't it, to look at it from all sides, that particular angle. Right, I've been asking...